Hello and welcome to Thompson. My name is William Lebowski and welcome to the end of 2022, literally right down to the wire. As I'm recording this, it's 5.30 p.m. my time. So I think very much uh, by the time that this video is even done rendering, uh, welcome. You already are in the new year, the future for me uh, in Europe. So welcome to your 2023. Uh, hopefully the rest of the United States will uh, enjoy the rest of their 2023 after this video goes up, uh, but I'm sure they probably won't get to it because there are so many important things happening between now and the end of the year. But I really just wanted to get this video out because for me, it was a huge moment, uh, so to say. And this is really the year that I'm saying goodbye uh, to LMP1s. And I know that uh, the that the hypercars have already kind of existed and of course there's the alpine uh kind of mix hyper like lmp1 car that's been specked out to be a hypercar so there's it's not a total goodbye it's a phase out of this year and even when it came to sim racing and i racing there was still of course the lmp1 category uh so there's lots of uh r factor 2 lmp1 options going around uh but going forward there i'm really expecting hoping and even hearing plans uh, from modding studios about uh, creating the new class of hypercars coming and even beyond that the, the, the following year of 2024 there's going to be so many options uh, I'm really looking forward to it and so it is a bittersweet goodbye because I am such a huge fan of the LMP1 class, but I'm so excited to say hello to the new hypercars of the future and uh, this is a uh, to go back just a, a quick step this the the reason this year is the goodbye and not when you know last year when it would have been the goodbye for uh with the wec and elms uh it, the reason is because it was still very possible for me to have them as a goal for racing in sim racing. And I've always really wanted to race the LMP1 top, uh, the tip of the spear, so to say, in all of the multi-class races that I've been in. However, uh, I haven't quite made it there. I'm still, you know, around the GTE, GT3 level. And of course, this year, which we'll talk about later, you know, I'm kind of diving into that even a little bit more uh, and just kind of you know kind of watering those roots a little bit as opposed to getting my feet wet with the prototypes but speaking of prototypes you're not going to see perfect prototype driving from me here uh, i just want to set the standard word you know two and a half minutes in so maybe the judges have already judged me but whatever uh, i'm not a uh, like i just had mentioned i am not the you know uh, competitive prototype driver so i'm sure i left a lot of opportunities uh, around the track for time and huge chunks uh, just because of not you know using the full advantage of the downforce or necessarily playing into the advantage of uh, of the downforce in its particular strong suit. Uh, one thing I definitely noticed, uh, I tried to record this video in R-Factor 2. I'm a huge fan of the Toyota TS-050 uh, in real life and in sim racing. And right now, of course, you're seeing the VRC version of it. I spent a lot of time trying to make this video happen in the previous days in R-Factor 2 with the Global Endurance modding version uh, of the same car. Just a huge fan of it. But I wasn't quite getting R-Factor 2 to cooperate with me uh, for the video. As you know, R-Factor 2 kind of, it is that way and just known for not <laughs> totally cooperating. But I had that experience. And so I just, after failure, after failure after failure of recording session i was like wait a second why don't i go to the tried and true method where real hybrid you know systems are actually simulated as well so it was nice to jump into ac and, and get that done and you know qu quickly just download and get some you know a field of lmp1s at my fingertips and, and of course get my favorite uh ts050 and so i was on my way with the proper uh, it, hybrid system as well so I there is also some quirks of just me not being a hundred percent familiar with AC but this uh, really reminded me um, that I have a lot of things that I now want to do in AC because I didn't I, I've kind of always put AC down or I've put a, a glass ceiling on it in some way shape or form saying oh right right now I feel like oh it could only do drift in traffic server kind of stuff it's not capable of of, of keeping up with my standards of of whatever I expect from something like ACC R Factor 2 i racing uh, in its prototypes and its modern day uh, racing this is such an old engine 
But this race really showed me the otherwise, and in fact, it's quite the opposite, that I have quite a lot of driving uh, ability to stack up to really uh, put those uh, things to the test in, in, in the title. So I, have, I feel like there is a huge future for me, and I know my last video uh, about it said, of course, it wasn't necessarily so positive. It was well, specifically a content manager. Uh, but since then, I have learned the error of my ways, uh, so to say, and you know, I'm really trying to, to more unlock the, the capabilities and quite honestly harvest all of the fun uh, that is available to me in ACC. Sorry, I said, of course, I said ACC there. But speaking of keeping themselves relevant and interesting, uh, AMS2 is somehow starting to catch my eye again, and I'm starting to feel like I have some unfinished business in in that sim. And in fact, on the Steam sale, I went ahead and I bought the, the cart classic. I, I don't exactly, I haven't even played it yet in, uh, in AMS2. Uh, I think that it is the cart car. I think they're calling it the F cart is that what they're uh, formula cart i think might be what it is called in in uh, in game but uh, everyone is ranting and raving about that and i saw it on so many people's best of 2022 lists that i had to take advantage of it well it was on sale 50 percent off so i went and scooped it up and uh, as you know like uh with me and a uh, in a set of corsa i do have a bit of a of a history with ams2 and it's not necessarily a a storied positive storied history and so i am thinking you know there might be some unfinished business there there might be something that i'm overly looking so to say and i really feel like um that sim has done its due diligence to keep itself relevant and interesting going into 2023 going into its third year by the way that time just went flew by uh it's you know in to, to add to the to time flying by with ams2 it used to be the baby on the block and it is still a new option but at this point a three-year-old sim is no longer a uh you you no longer look at it like a beta and Frankly, it should no longer perform like a beta, and I think I really need to, to see what that is because I think the people that really play AMS2, that really love it, that really uh, are passionate about it that I see, they're having an experience that is beyond a beta experience. So I am interested to, to giving that more of a, a fair shake in 2023, see what's up. I like to do my uh, yearly check-ins with that title, and, I, and I'm thinking that uh, a lot has kind of happened under uh, my... Uh, overlooking it uh, over the past year uh, and speaking of overlooking in hybrids or, or in um, hyper cars and LMP ones I am looking forward to i racing in the coming year I feel like I've got some plans with the new BMW LMHD I I really want to get involved there. I think that that's going to be uh, an interesting place. And right now, it is the place for official hypercar. The official hypercar in our factor to that van wall has been a bit of a disappointment. Already forgotten about from its Q4 release in my eyes. And... Um, so I really am interested to see where that competition is there. Uh, like I said, I didn't get myself involved in the LMP1 competition when it was in its era. And now that here we are in the era of that new law hypercar, I want to I want to be in it. So that's that's going to be a goal going forward in iRacing in the coming year. A race room is definitely something that I am found myself involved in. And that is because they have an amazing touring car experience. I've already gotten myself signed up for touring car leagues uh, going forward in the, in the coming year. I'm really looking forward to that because one thing that I did learn uh, this year is how much I love touring car racing, uh, both from those uh, content packs throughout the year from R Factor 2. I think those British touring cars really saved R Factor 2. It really did a lot for R Factor 2 this year, and it really did a lot for me in sim racing and driving style and learning to drive front wheel drive cars and how much fun and how much competition and how much wheel banging the, is capable of happening there. So I'm really looking forward to that uh, WTCR League coming out of Race Room because they have a fantastic uh, officially licensed uh, officially licensed uh, touring car uh content and series and so i'm really looking really really just truly excited about that can't say how excited about it enough uh and acc is going to continue for sure uh for me i'm involved in uh i've signed up for a couple leagues i think at this point or at least uh, have them on the horizon so acc has definitely been a place where i've learned a lot in all of my sim time sim racing, the the last half year, last quarter of the year that I've spent racing in ACC has improved my sim racing dramatically and more than anything else to date in sim racing. So really learning about weight distribution, weight shifting, and the importance of timing your inputs uh, and what you specifically you're braking and throttle and how that really maximizes your speed around the entire track and not just in the corners has really been a huge uh, lesson for me. And so that, that is something that definitely 
definitely needs to happen. Definitely needs to continue. I think I'm going to be spending a lot of my time there, a core amount of my time. I do have my LFM license now for ACC, so I think I definitely need to, to get into the school of hard knocks, so to say, over at LFM and ACC because that is going to be a place uh, where I'm going to be learning. And beyond that, the last uh, item on my list would be the endurance racing plans for 2023. Uh, I did have a 12 hours of Bathurst uh, on the horizon, and I, that's now a very tentative uh, option for me, and it's looking like I might not be able to compete. Again, I don't know that I can lend the time uh, to it, so I think I have to you know, recluse, my, recluse, I said that, recuse myself from that uh, going forward in the future, but that is what I got, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, we're going to see you in the next one. Uh, I'm just really looking forward uh, to this coming year. I'm really looking forward to what's out there. And beyond that, uh, I've got some personal plans uh, kind of going. I've got a big move. It was a little bit unexpected. And so I think January is probably going to be a little bit slow on videos, but don't expect nothing uh, from me. But anyway, that's what I got. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic 2023 and I hope your 2020 two um was you know something to write home about in and of itself but just uh again thank you guys for the the support in 2022 it was huge for me uh and i definitely noticed it and it was uh just it, it, it was just all around huge for me thank you thank you so much uh it did a lot for me we'll see you guys in 2023 really looking forward to it